Hi friends, today I'm playing with these gradient washes. I also shared this in my um, private Facebook group over the weekend, and I'm actually going to be making kind of a challenge in there. I feel like when I was able to master creating a gradient, it helped me so much. And one of the things that I think I kind of got stuck on when I originally learned gradients was how do I use that? How do I use it in a pedal? So I'm just going to practice a few here this morning and then I'm going to apply it to creating a pedal here. So right here I had created using these colors this gradient for a sunflower petal from cad yellow to cad orange to sienna to Payne's gray. And I remember in, in college when I learned this, it was like, okay, what do I do with that? Um, and it's good to remember it's, in my head anyways, this was just my thinking, I always applied that to backgrounds and skies and things like that. I didn't think to apply it. Here's another one. So here's a gradient, here's a gradient where I'm going from darker to lighter or maybe going up uh, like these and mixing them. This is also like a gradient, a wash, where I'm adding water and I'm getting lighter and lighter. But what I wanted to kind of share today was, you know, how do you use that? aside from backgrounds, because that was just where I got stuck on it, but that's just me. Um, so if you don't need to hear about supplies, you can just fast forward. But today I've got my Neptune here. Um, I've got my Eight Velvet Touch Round, which you know is kind of my favorite lately. I've been using this Neptune. It's a little bit softer, as you can see. Look at how easy the, the um, tip moves. This one is much snappier. This one very soft. This one snappier. So the Neptunes, because they're softer, they soak up a ton of water. They really, so if you can see it here, I don't know if you can quite pick this up on the camera, but this is much fatter. It's got a lot more water in it. The Princeton uh, Velvet Touch Round, is a little stiffer and just doesn't hold so much water. So just something to keep in mind when you're painting that this one is going to go onto your paper with a lot more water in it, okay? Um, of course, you can also use these Degatos. You know, these are my favorite student brush. These are getting quite worn in. I've had these for about a year. They're still great. And you get a whole set for, I think it's $12. But look at the points still on here after, it'll be a year in March. So great brushes to start with. I'm playing with my, my Lang palette because I was pretty happy. I just filled it up with my tubes, my My Lang tubes. Thank you to a subscriber for showing those to me. I hadn't seen them. So I'm pretty happy. These colors are really vibrant as you can see. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do on this side, I'm just practicing because I seriously feel like this is your watercolor superpower practice these as much as you can because these if you can get these dialed in and get good at these you're going to be able to paint flowers and things so easily i'm going to start here with just um let me pick up some let's do yellow because i'm going to be sharing a sunflower later this week Matter of fact, let me show you, I'm going to be also doing a class. Um, my class this month is going to maybe be a snow owl and also this beautiful sunflower. But this I think is a little bit too much for um, one tutorial. So I'll do this as a class and then I'm also going to paint um, one sunflower for um, a YouTube tutorial. Okay, so I think the biggest thing is for me it was, is picking up some water, making sure you don't have too much on there. So if you have to tap off, do that. You want, this is so huge. This was life changer for me, you guys, is going in just damp. 
you don't want a puddle. You want just a shine. Let me get a little bit more here. So if you're getting puddling, that is too much. Now what I'm going to do is just rinse my brush, tap it off on my water, and go in and start pulling that line down. Look at that beautiful gradient. It also does help to have your paper on a tilt. Put my brush in there one more time and just lightly rinse it off. And I just keep going. Take a little bit more. Just damp, not, not puddles. And look how beautiful. If you guys can master this, I promise you, you will be a master watercolor artist. So again, making sure when you go on here, it's just shiny. You haven't got puddles. So tapping off your brush on the side of your palette, let me show you, because my palette I'm using today is flat. But if you were in here and you're picking up this paint, Okay, doesn't matter how much water you have in this little well. It's how much you go onto your paper with. So my brush may be just fully loaded there, but what I'm going to do before I go onto my paper, and I think this is where it gets confusing, is I'm tapping off. So any excess water in there, I'm not necessarily scraping, I'm tapping off. And what's happening is any extra water is going into this little well. So my brush is just damp. I teach all my beginner students when you come to a class here in my studio to do that, like over and over, just to get used to how much paint and water should be on your brush. I think there's a huge... Um, needs to be a huge distinction. So when I say 80% water, 20% paint or pigment or 50-50, that's what's in your little well here. But what happens is I see people thinking their brush has to be 80% loaded. And what, what happens is you go in and you just have too much and it's too hard to control for a beginner. So Mix here, 80% pigment, 20% water. So you may have a huge puddle here, but the key is before going on to your uh, paper to tap it off. So I know that was kind of a lengthy lot of talking there, but I think this is really important because it's not, again, about how much liquid you so much have in here, but tapping off and how much liquid you have in your brush and go to your paper with. The next one I want to do is I'm going to kind of um, create a, let's see, let's go with green here. So I'm rinsing my brush and when you're doing gradients where you're going to almost your lightest value like this, really important you guys to wash and then rinse your brush, because you wanna make sure you're going in at the bottom here with a clean brush. As you're moving down, you don't have to rinse. You're just getting rid of a little bit of that water. And let me see, when I do this, I like to be able to show you my water, but there's just not quite enough room here. Let's go ahead and go into this one with green. So I'm going to get some green. I'm gonna use this palette here so you can see me tap off. It's another Miss Ceramics palette, which by the way, everybody keeps asking me about these. Um, I'm not affiliated with her, so when I send you that link, that's just, I don't get anything from that. She doesn't make these a lot because they're really time consuming. So you, you certainly can reach out to her. It might help to throw my name in there and say, hey, saw these on Debbie's YouTube. I'd love to have one. Um, and it seems like she'll kind of make a bulk of them. So just kind of that disclaimer in there. 
Um, I don't want you guys to be disappointed when I've been ordering these for many years, four years probably, and I order like four or five at a time. It's quite costly, but I use them in my um, studio for my in-person classes. Okay, so I've got this paint here. This is about 50, 50, 50 water, 50 paint. Now see how I'm tapping off? Because if I go straight to my paper like that, that brush is fully loaded, that is wet. Too hard for beginners. It's too hard even for more advanced beginners. Tap off and look at the puddles coming off. Now I can go in and let's create another wash like this. And it does help to tilt your paper. And let's go in and lay that down. Now I'm going to just give my brush a quick rinse scrape off a little because I don't want too much water there. And then let's go in and just start dragging that down. Rinse off again. Go in. Look at that, it's getting lighter and lighter. Go in again, rinse off. Just damp, no puddles and I just keep moving down. Let me get a little bit more water here. A little bit more water. Until I'm at my lightest value. Look at how beautiful they are. I am telling you guys, if I could give you one tip out of any tip for your paintings and to make you feel so much more confident and mastering watercolors, get this down, practice it, practice it. Play with the water, play with um, the damp and damp. Now I have seen people do like a bead of water and that's another technique, but I found over the years working with beginners, damp is much easier to work with. So what I wanna do here, is I'm going to do mix some colors because this is what you will use in say a petal. And for me again, it's important not just to learn the technique, but like, okay, what do I do with that now? What do, how do I apply that to a flower um, versus you know just a background or a beautiful sky? So we're gonna go in here with our yellow. And this is kind of like a babying technique. And I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do this out there, but I'm sharing how I do this. So I've loaded my brush. Now I'm not going onto my paper because that brush is full, guys. I'm tapping off. And you may not be able to see it, but there is a lot of liquid coming off. And that's about a 50 or maybe 80, 20 mix, 80 pigment, 20 water. And then I go on to my sheet of paper here. No puddles, this is just shiny. Rinse my brush. And I might just lighten it a tiny bit there, but rinse my brush. So now I've cleaned it. I'm gonna pick up some of this orange I've got here and I have to kind of work quick because you don't want to go in with a different amount of paint. Otherwise, you're going to get blooms. And I start here. Now I start moving up. Look how beautiful that is. And I kind of play with this. So wash, rinse my brush. I might pick up a tiny bit more yellow. And I just start pulling these down. Now I'm going to go into that sepia color, which I love because it has a lot of kind of oranges in it. So I'm getting my paint, not going straight to my paper. I'm tapping off and the, the liquid is coming off. I'm going to start down here, do a line. Now just wash and rinse my brush a little bit and start dragging that up until it joins with that orange. 
Now I might go into my orange just a tiny bit, just to help it. So you're kind of playing here. Look how beautiful that is though. Oops, just stuck my finger in that. Now I'm gonna pull that brown down just a tiny bit and let's go into a blue. Let's see, I'm gonna use Payne's blue, Payne's gray, sorry. So this is just damp, shiny. And now let's just blend those two together. I might pick up a tiny bit more of that brown. That was too much. And start mixing these together. You don't wanna to mix too, too much because otherwise you just start creating maybe some mud. So there you go. Look at that beautiful transition. I could even bring that Payne's Blue up, but this is starting to dry, so I wanna just stop. You could maybe even hold it upside down like this and get some more of that. But you wanna stop about right now because now this is starting to dry. So this up here is drier than what I'm going in with and that's where you'll get those blooms. So let's leave that and go into our green. I'm going to pick up my tree green or sap green, whichever one you're using. I'm going to do this 80-20. Oops, got a little too much pigment there. So tapping off, I can pick up all the paint in that well, almost, but I don't wanna go on my paper with that. I wanna tap off and get some of that paint out of the belly of the brush. And let's go in across the top, just like this, a beautiful shine, no puddle. There we go. Now I'm just going to rinse my brush and just soften that line a little bit and then pick up some beautiful blue. Let me get some blue on my brush here. You can use whatever blue you want. I really like the turquoisey blue. Trying to get that on my brush. I gotta kinda hurry here so this doesn't get too dry up here. There we go. Pick up a little bit of paint. I'm actually going to turn this and start bringing this into the green. Look how pretty. So again, you guys, if you can master this, you are going to be so ahead of the grade. Look at that letting them blend together. So beautiful. So now I don't want this just to be another wash tutorial. I wanna show you how to put that into action into like a petal. This is gonna be a sunflower type petal. So let me, let's see here. Let me get another book and let's create that sunflower petal. Cause for me, I, I can learn that technique again and I can learn it, but it's like, okay, now what do I do with it? So let's create a petal here and we're going to make it yellow. So I go back into that yellow, tap off cause you wanna get all that liquid out of the belly of the brush. So your brush isn't full. And let's go in and just create a petal. I'm just gonna kind of draw out a petal like this. Now, I'm going to go in like we did here. It's just shiny, it's not puddling. Rinse my brush, scrape it off, and I'm going to just go into that Rinse it again, 
and keep pulling it down. Okay, so I've got this soft edge. Now look at that beautiful wash. And then let's go into that with our orange. So going into my brush, I gotta do this quick before that dries. Tap off and then starting at the bottom here, I'm gradually going in. Wash, rinse my brush, tap it off. I keep washing and rinsing my brush. Look at this beautiful gradient. Isn't that lovely? Wash, rinse my brush. Can help pull this down. And I've got this lovely blend. Look at that. Now you can go into the bottom here with a little darker of that orange and kind of wet in wet. So this isn't as much a blend but you gotta work fast with damp and damp because otherwise you get different wetnesses and those are the blooms are gonna be coming. So let me add just a tiny bit of this brown. Again, tap off, don't go immediately to your paper. Matter of fact, I feel like I need to scrape some of that off. And I'm just gonna tap in at the bottom here, just ever so lightly. Now you can do two things here. Wash, rinse my brush, dab it off, and keep dabbing it off. Because your brush is picking up more of that color. You can either pull it in to this other color, or you could even blow, but look at how beautiful that is. Now, the center of my flowers my sunflowers, I typically make like a Prussian blue. So if this is the center of the flower, that will also go in there and just kind of bleed in like that. Okay, so let's try a leaf. I'm gonna practice a leaf. Getting my brush wet, but not fully loaded. I'm going to go into my green. Doesn't really matter how much I've got in here. This is 50-50. What matters is how much I leave on my brush to go into my paper. So my brush is fully loaded when it's inside here, but I am taking some of that off. Let's create a leaf here. and gotta work a little bit fast. So I'm using that wash technique. Now I'm gonna wash, rinse my brush and pulling it down like I did with this wash. Adding some water, not too much. Tap off, scrape off some of that water in your brush. Pulling it down and keep rinsing my brush so I'm getting clearer and clearer. And now I'm gonna go into the bottom here with like an olive green. Wash, rinse, tap off, and now Pulling out, doing this gradient wash. And here again, we could put some yellow in the middle too. Wash, rinse, tap off. Wash, rinse. And look at the beautiful blend we get. 
Now you can blow, you can tilt your paper. Let me blow. Tilt your paper. And look at this beautiful blend. So pretty, feathery, soft. Oh, I love it, you guys. So I hope this helped you. Um, I wanted, I thought it was really important to go over this and um, show you this before I do a sunflower because when I do sunflowers, my entire sunflower, sunflower is using these washes. And the other tip, I was really thinking about it last night, like so many of you struggle with how wet and, you know, controlling some of the water. And honest, you guys, draw an entire sheet of these squares and practice these till you get really good at them. And you can see how much water you have on them. There are other techniques out there where you are a little wetter and you pull the, the beaded wet line. I don't teach that to beginners, just personal for me. I'm not saying it's wrong at all, but I've just found, and for me, when I learned, it was easier to go damp and not have that beaded line. Because it's just, for me, when I was learning decades ago, controlling a really wet puddle was just harder for me. So I hope this helped. Um, please let me know. And then the other big tip, um, you know, when you're picking up your paint, so this is really watery, you guys. 80-20, 80, 80 water, 20 pigment. Just tap off. It's not about the percentages in your well. It's about how much you have on your brush, okay? And just tap it off and then practice. What is that amount that just gives me this beautiful shine and not a puddle? And look at that, so, so pretty. Get used to where you can just do them like I just did and you have a beautiful blend, no drips, no puddles. It's just a shine. All right, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, stay tuned. I will be working on this beautiful sunflower. I'm only going to paint one of these for you. And then I think I may do a two hour if there's an interest um, class that you pay for. But you know what? I'm going to do for free one on here for you. So you can apply that to more. This is just going to be for the, the uh, semi-private Zoom class, more of a composition. It would be too long for a tutorial. All right, everybody, I hope you give this a try. Please let me know if there were some tips in here that helped you so I know. And um, happy painting, everyone. I love our little uh, community here. I think it's so fantastic. You guys are so wonderful. I wake up, I read your comments, and you really, truly make my day. And I'll list the supplies I have, but really just use any round brush you have. And whatever pigments you're using that you love and they inspire me, you use those. All right, everybody. I'll see you soon.